Hello everyone, um, happy Wednesday. Welcome to today's Cross Matches product demo webinar um, on how to set up an ESG document management framework. Um, so we have an expert here, Justin, who is going to take you through the platform and give you an overview of how it works and just a little bit more of an insight into clause match um, so the demo will roughly take about 20 minutes and then we will go into the q a section so if you do have any questions please feel free to put them in the question box and hopefully um, we will get around to answering them all at the end of the session um, so thank you and we shall speak to you all after justin over to you Excellent. Thank you very much, Emma. Hello, everybody. I'm Justin. I'm um, a lead up uh, uh, business development over here in the US. And I'm going to be taking you through um, a demonstration of clause match, particularly as it pertains to ESG. Uh, it's very possible that you may be considering, um, you know, with all the new regulations that are coming out very soon, I believe the SEC just said that they're going to be coming out with some new regulations in the spring here of 2023. So very exciting times. Uh, it's a it's a hot topic, and a lot of organizations are considering how do we develop a, uh, and put in place a, a, a framework and a, a way of working with ESG policies, procedures. What does that look like? How do we develop those policies based on the regulations? And then um, as the SEC and other regulators are implementing new rules, and requirements around this um, hot topic. Um, how do we uh, maintain some sort of organization and structure? So when a regulator eventually comes and knocking on your door, you have a good way of, of highlighting and showing that you're staying compliant with these new regulations coming out. So particularly for uh, regardless of what size of an organization you might be, um, this is something to, to consider as um, the, the regulators are starting to implement these rules. It's important to have something in place uh, so that you can stay on top of it and, and maintain that organization structure. So that's what we're going to show you today a little bit. Um, what I'm going to be showing you is, is our solution called Clause Match. And what I'm going to be specifically focusing on for you all today is around um, looking at uh, an ESG policy and how do you maintain um, version control of this? How do you easily collaborate on this document? How do you tie other documents or potential regulations to the document, to specific paragraphs of the document uh, to ensure that you maintain this organization structure? And how do you just go through a general process of, of working in a policy so that you have a, a good way of maintaining the workflow process, staying on top of, of approvals and making sure everything is running in a seamless way? So for the next 15 to 20 minutes or so, uh, we're going to run through that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cool. All right. If anybody cannot see the screen, feel free to let us know in the chat and I will make a correction, but I'm hoping everybody can see the platform. So what I've done here is um, I've brought up a clause match uh, within our document editor instance, and you're taking a look at our ESG policy. Now, a uh, couple of quick logistical things and formatting things for those of you of interest. Clause Match is a SaaS-based solution. So this is based in the cloud, backed by AWS. So all of the information, all of our current clients that are already going through this type of a process with ESG and figuring out what they want to do, all their information is, is backed up in that way. And with single sign-on, once you're involved in the platform, you get access to this platform. Um, the current view that you're looking at right now is called our document editor, which is part of our <clears throat> uh, content management module. There are two modules. We're primarily focusing on our, our documents today, but we have two modules. One that's our policy management uh, module. So you can actually do the work of um, mapping your ESG policies to regulations um, or making edits and changes to the document. We also have a policy portal, uh, which is where all of your other employees in your organization will be able to go and find the ESG policy or the ESG procedure and see how you're dealing with that from both 
um, environmental, the social or governance sides of, of this type of a document, getting perspective on that. But for the most part, we're going to be focusing our time here in this view um, and showing you a, a multitude of different functionalities that you're going to need in order to stay on top of regulations as they come out and as they change and as you collaborate with one another to understand how do we want to make changes to this policy? How do we want to write this policy? How are we going to maintain and stay up to date with the, with the rules and requirements coming out? So this is our document editor. Uh, hopefully you'll see that it has a very similar look and feel to what you might be using today, Word. Um, and some of the things we're going to highlight are, you know, as you have a document here, how do you how do you make changes? How do you collaborate with one another? That's a key component uh, to the document. What does an approval process kind of look like? How do I um, connect this document to other documents or to the actual rules and requirements that are coming out around this topic? So, um, First, um, let's take a look at how we would make some changes and collaborate within the document. So you you currently might be thinking to yourself, well, if we're new to ESG, um, this is this is new for us. We want to actually set up um, and know what we need to even put into a document. There are um, you know resources that can help with that, and also you're probably going to want to start with what the the uh, upcoming rules and regulations and requirements might be stating. That's that's a good place to start. But there are some examples out there from other organizations that you can take a look at um, and see. Um, but what's really important is how do you write it? How do you maintain it? Right. So um, what you're noticing here is that currently this is a, a brand new document because we also have gone on our, our own ESG uh, uh, journey now. So we're currently in version one. We are in the draft stage of, of this document. So this is a brand new document that we're working on. And we, now we need to make some changes to it. We need to get some approvals. Um, and then we need to release this document so that the uh, employee base can take a look and see how we're managing our ESG today. And we need to tie this to the specific other document procedure and regulations that are out there. So um, first, let's just kind of take a look. As you can see, it's got a similar look and feel. There's a table of contents. You can easily go and find the exact section that you're looking for within the document. Um, but you can easily come into uh, a document here and type something in. And just make some sort of a simple, simple change like this. Now, what's what's happening here is what I can also do is let's say one of the nice functionalities of our platform is having a full audit trail. And we do this at, at two different levels. So this is very important, particularly <laughs> for any of you who have gone through an audit or an exam or had a regular give you a surprise uh, uh, <laughs> surprise quiz visit on how you're doing. You can probably relate to this, but they're going to come in and they're going to ask you, hey, show me um, what you know your ESG policy and the changes you made on XYZ day. Well, how do you do that? More than likely, if you're just using Word, Excel, or SharePoint, things like this, you got to go find the right folder. You got to go find your ESG policy. You got to find the right version of it. And then you got to have to, you know, at the end of the page, if however you do it today, find the information and say, hey, here's the changes that we did. Well, we actually solve all that um, in Clause Match by giving you this audit trail in two different ways one at the document level and then one at the actual paragraph level. So you can see as I made this change, it already was. Um, registered today at 10.08 that I made this change in the audit trail, which is fully exportable in a PDF or, or Word format that will that you can hand to the regulators. Well, you know, regulators still like to have that handy dandy PDF at their fingertips. Say, here are all the changes and things that we've made. So all of these changes that, are, and that have happened over the life cycle of the document are going to be tracked here. And then also, if I click on a paragraph, any changes within that actual paragraph itself are going to be tracked as well. So you can go very, very granular in the details. You can look for comments, connections, changes. You can look up by a user. You can look up by a date, so on and so forth. Now, we're this is our first version of, uh, of draft of our document here. So we don't have prior versions to call on for history. And we'll, we'll get to that in a different document. But you can see that everything's getting tracked right away, which is extremely important. Uh, as rules and regulations around ESG change over time, you're going to need to keep that history to see 
who did what, when, and where. So that is uh, possible in the platform. Now let's say we um, are good with our changes here. We have a couple of uh, approvals that we need to get done. So what, what I've done ahead of time is I've, I've assigned myself uh, lucky me being able to do that. I've assigned myself uh, the ability to approve this document myself. So that's good. Um, what this does is that this is going to send an email. So uh, one key component to consider as you're trying to set up a, a framework of how to deal with policies in general, but particularly around ESG is, um, uh, and one thing that we hear quite a lot from, from the folks we're working with our current clients and, and others that are considering ESG is um, you know developing the policies is the first component and then staying on top of it and tracking all these approvals and what changes are made and who said what. A lot of people still use email uh, for that or word track changes. And it's just very difficult to use those tools because uh, I'm sure we've all been in a scenario where you feel like you have all the approvals done, you're ready to approve the document. And then that last person in the last second sends their last email saying, oh, by the way, can you make this change? Uh, as before, before we approve the document. Well, we have a way in our workflow process of of automating that, which I'm going to show you here. Um, but what I've done is I've sent myself an approval that we need to do before we can move to the next stage in our workflow process, which we'll take a look at here. So what I'm going to do is I get an email. It's going to come in through here like this. I can click on the email, and you can see that it gives me the title of the document. It takes, gives me a link to go directly to that document so I can do my approval. This is part of the automation process that we have within Clause Match to help you as you're developing and working through your approvals and process of your ESG policies and procedures. So that email would take me here. I and mean, here's my, my approval. I'm going to go ahead and approve this document and say all the changes look good. And now this gets tracked within the document. You can see that this has been approved and now I'm ready to move this. You can see here, it says my approval has been granted. I'm ready to move this to the review stage. So we've moved this to the next stage in our process. You can see that we're now in stage review, still in version 1.0, we haven't approved anything yet, but now the review process has gone back to me to do another approval. Uh, obviously, you'll be using other people, I would imagine, but for demo purposes, we're going to keep it all in-house with just me. So um, now we've moved this through and I can do another approval, so on and so forth. But but how do we do all that? Well, um, one key component that you need to consider when developing frameworks for your, your documentation, your policies, your procedures, particularly around this topic, and this, this can be for our other documents as well, but as it pertains to ESG, thinking about how do we uh, start working on these documents, one thing that we're able to do is in our is work on templates. You want to make sure that your policies have the same look and feel. You might want to do that organization wide. You want your you might want your ESG policies to conform to the same type of look and feel, and that's one thing we're able to do with our templates um, uh, within Clause Match. And one of the things within the template is being able to set a workflow. Um, so this is just an example workflow process that we have. You can set this up however you want, and that's part of our, our process with helping within our platform to help set these up for you. This is just an example of that. Um, so this might be a lot simpler. It might be even more complex, but primarily, uh, potentially. But you have all these different stages that you can set. You can select a deadline for when it needs to be done. And then you can also select, I can add myself again if I need to. You can add other people or groups of people to this process. So just as you saw right now, as soon as you move things through the process, you get another email um, that says, hey, I've got something to do. I've got something to look at. So this gives you that kind of functionality and, and ability to do that. One other key component for providing structure and a framework for dealing with ESG policies is being able to categorize and be able to easily find this information. So um, providing categorization is very important. So what we have here is, is kind of like a, if you use shared folders or SharePoint, you should be fairly familiar with this type of functionality, but having a folder structure, a way to categorize your document. So it lives in different, different ways and really considering where do I want my ESG policy to live in this particular, for this particular document, we are having it live in our policy section, compliance, legal, all locations, because this ESG policy is for, for all over. 
um, uh, our global enterprise, and then within our legal governance and compliance um, uh, risk component. We got four different areas of categor categorizing this. You may want to consider how do we categorize our ESG? Is it do we have to have a, a section in our ESG policy for each particular state as regulations come out? California may have a, a regulation coming out. The SEC has a regulation coming out. FINRA may have an, a regulation coming out. Um, uh, we noticed that in Germany, they're coming out with a major initiative where all companies over 3,000 employees are going to have to have ESG policies and procedures instated. So if you're working globally, how, how are other countries structuring ESG? If you're working in Germany, something to consider perhaps. Um, so where do we want to categorize this? So this gives, again, this is an example of, of categories. You can set this up however you would want, but something to consider is how do we categorize it? Let's not just throw it in a folder and label it ESG because it may need to live in a multiple different ways. Um, and and clause match gives you a way of not only getting a different perspective on it, but as you're working through the life cycle of this document and making changes, those changes will then exist in all of these areas that you make uh, the change. So instead of having to make the change multiple, multiple times, you can now make the change one time, go through the process, and then it automatically updates in all these areas to give you that perspective. So something to consider as you're going through that. So we've gone through, we've moved through our next stage, but I forgot, I need to connect this to another document. I completely forgot how to do that. So what I want to do is I want to connect this to either a regulation or maybe another policy where it's relevant. So one key component uh, is being able to map your policy to the outcoming rules and regulations, and they're coming. So SEC might be the first domino, then like I said, it could be California, then you might have your your. Um, Subsidiary in Germany might need to be dealing with that just as the examples. So I want to be able to say when a regulator comes in and show them exactly this particular paragraph for this document is satisfying this ESG regulation that has just come out. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select a paragraph. I'm going to go to our, our handy dandy toolbar here on the right hand side. There's an option here that says connections. And what I want to do is first I'm going to pull up uh, a document. Or actually, let's do this. So I've done a, a general search for environment, and I'm going to try and select a policy. So I'm selecting a, a policy that I want to attach this paragraph to. So I'm going to attach it to our global fraud policy. This could be an, an ESG regulation since they're um, are not a ton that are currently out there. Once the regulations come out, you can quickly upload them into our platform and do this type of, of um, connection. But now that I have the document I'm looking for, there's this little icon on the side. You're going to see here it now says click to link this paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and click this. And what's happened now on the side is this document and all the sections within have this little button on the side or this little window. And I'm able to quickly select the sections that pertain to this paragraph of, of my ESG policy to say these things are connected to this good governance section of our ESG policy. So I can see that. You also can see that this big blue bar will just not go away. It won't leave me alone. It keeps following me. Well, the reason why this exists is that if I click on this, it's telling me that the entire document, so this entire fraud policy is going to be associated to this good governance um, paragraph of my ESG policy. So um, you can do document to document connections. You can do document to paragraph like we're about to do, and you can do paragraph to paragraph. However, you need to uh, provide connections within your organization to say, here's a, a procedure for how we're going to follow this ESG um, policy statement. Here's the regulation that satisfies that our, our entire policy satisfies. There's many different ways uh, to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save that connection. So now this entire document is saved. And when I pull this up, you can see that I now have an ongoing connection to my global fraud policy. So that's all well and good. We've just done that. We've made a connection to uh, another document that's important for our ESG policy. One thing I want to quickly show you is, well, that's all great, but this is not approved yet. So how do I take a look at previous history of a document? Well, let's go take a look at that fraud policy and see how you can do version compare over time. 
with your ESG uh, uh, policies. So I just want to take you into this view because one thing that you're going to be able to have as you go through the life cycle of dealing with updated rules and regulations around ESG is being able to see the change that happened over the versions in history and life cycle of that of that policy and of those regulations and requirements. So we have this ability to compare versions. You can see it right here. And what this is going to show me is my current version, which is version 1.6 in draft mode versus one of the more uh, one of the older versions, prior versions, or the current version of this document. So the current version is version 1.5 here with the new time date and stamp in 2021. That's the version we're working on. But what if I want to go to version 1.4? So what this is going to show me is that 10 edits have been made. I can come in and take a look at the activity in the, in the audit trail, and I can scroll through and see the red line or what has been added throughout the document. And it'll take me to each instance so I can take a look and see what has happened. So some of these things might be very minor, like removing a, a dash here, um, adding some words and verbiage, but all this information is giving you the ability to see what has happened over the life cycle of your document and also being able to give you the access to see what has changed by who and, and how over time, what connections are currently being undertaken um, within this document. So um, you can see that our ESG policy is listed here as well. So I can see that this document is connected, which we just did. So this gives you, um, as you're considering developing and, and creating a framework for ESG, um, and as the rules and regulations come out, it again, is very important to look about how do we not only start writing ESG policy, but how are we gonna organize and structure it to combine with the organization and the, and the company as a whole? Where does it sit? How do we categorize this? How do we make sure that what, when we do write the policy and we have it, that it's connected in the right way and we've connected to the appropriate rules and regulations so when the audit and and the the regulators come out we can quickly and easily um, show that we've created that connection um, and then it's it's there how do we show the the version life cycle over over the the life cycle of our esg policy to show that we're staying current with those changes these are some of the things that we're able to do in clause match to give you that tool and to help you go through that approval process and that review cycle so that it, it, it is meeting your deadlines and helping you um, do it in a timely way instead of just being another thing that you have to do in your work day. So these were the main components um, that we wanted to show you within our, our platform on how you can set up and structure um, your ESG policies and instruction framework. Um, one of the last components I'll briefly touch on before we get to some questions with the last five minutes we have is that you can see that we have this categorization here on the main page. You have an easy way of quickly and finding information. And another key thing that a lot of people will struggle with that we hear is being able to easily and quickly find information. So one thing you can see is that with our advanced search capabilities, you can type in a, a phrase or keyword. So you can see ESG and anywhere that ESG shows up within a, uh, uh, a document in either in the title or within the paragraph of a document, you can see that it'll, it'll show up here. So here's that ESG policy we're just working on, but you can see ESG is in a lot of other regulations and other documents that we have here today. So you can easily and quickly go take a look at those. If I click on it, it'll take me directly to that document so I can review and see what um, what is, uh, going on in, in that particular paragraph of the document. So these are just some of the things that you can do uh, with the power of our platform of, of Clause Match. So with the remaining five minutes, I wanna pause and see if there are any questions that I can answer for any of you. Please feel free to throw them into the chat. I can, I can take a look. If there are no uh, questions or anything, um, you know, I hope the session is useful um, in showing you how you can utilize technology to stay on top of the regulations and um, and provide a, a, a good management process for yourselves on how to deal with up, uh, updating your, your ESG policies or creating them from scratch. 
Thank you, Justin, for uh, the overview and the demo of Claws Match. I hope our attendees found it really interesting and insightful. Um, I'm just going to kick off with one of the questions that we've had come through, and that is, what type of documents can you upload? Is it only Word documents? Good question. Yes. So um, within Claws Match, based on the document editor that I was showing you, it's our own intellectual property, but it has a similar look and feel to um, Word. So the the only way to upload documents is to either you can create a document from scratch or you can upload it as a as a Word file, .docs format file. It's the only type of uh, files you can upload in the platform. But if I were to come back into the document editor, you can export documents as a PDF or as an Excel sheet. And one thing that you can do with the Excel sheet is actually provide a, an Excel sheet that also shows all of the connections that you have within the document, which would include any ESG regulations. So you can only upload Word files, but you can export as PDF or Excel. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Um, and we have a few minutes left, so I will ask probably our last question of the session. Um, does Clause Match provide regulations? Oh, very good question. So as of today, Clause Match is not a horizon scanning tool. We don't actually provide the regulations. As the regulations um, come out, you can easily upload them into the platform and, and do what I showed you um, in the platform. Uh, we also work very nicely with some horizon scanning uh, companies out there and can easily do integrations to do seamless push pushes of the information as um uh, regulations change and you want to update that, we can work with that. But there is a way to maintain a regulatory library, uh, which I'm showing here. We have a regulation library here, all of our regulations in this folder, but we do not currently provide you with the regulations or, or as of today. That's something you would still have to do manually. Great. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Justin, for running through the demo today. I hope everyone um, had a great session. And if you do have any more questions or um, you would like some more information, please feel free to reach out to Justin directly or um, Claws Match. You can email us and we will definitely get straight back to you. Um, so thank you all for joining and um, yeah, wish you all the rest of the good day. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.